Hi, it's Chester Topwell at Blue Peak and Computer Training, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to automatically number the records in your data. This might be useful if you want to revert to an original sort order. For example, if I was to sort this data by date and I wasn't able to undo that sort, how would I get back to the original sort order? Well, I can use my transaction ID column to get back to the original sort order. The other thing you might want to do is to get Excel to automatically number your records as you add them to the end of your data table. For example, in this data table, if I scroll to the bottom of the data and I add a new date, it automatically numbers my record. I will also show you how to add leading zeros to your numbers, if that's important, and also how to prefix your numbers with text might be for product numbers or serial numbers. Okay, let's see how this can be done. The first method I'm gonna show you works within existing data. What you would do is you type the first number that you want to display and then double click on this little fill handle, the square bottom right of the cell, and that will copy the number down as far as there is adjacent data. Then what you can do is go to this little auto fill options button and choose fill series. By default, it's copy cells, which is why it's copied the one we want to fill series. You can see now it increments that number for you. Although this method works great within existing data, it doesn't work at all well or at all if you're starting within a blank worksheet. For example, if I type one here and double click on that fill handle, it does nothing. So in this situation, what you can do is type the first number that you want to appear in the cell. Then on the home tab of your ribbon, go to the fill button, go to series, and you've got to decide if you're filling a row or a column. We're filling a column. Specify your step value. So how much do you want to increment by? We want to increment by one, and then specify your stop value. So if I wanted to go to 100, I'd put 100 in there, click on OK, and you can see that it fills that series, one, my original number, down to 100 using an increment of one. As I said previously, this method is great if you want to revert back to an original sort order if I was to sort by price. And I couldn't undo that sort. I can use the transaction ID column to get back to my original sort order. If I was to add a new record, let's just add a date, it doesn't automatically number my new record. I would need to fill that value down, fill series, or what I can do is hold down control and drag that little fill handle, and that will automatically increment that number. If I was to delete a record, it doesn't renumber the records below. So I'm now missing a number. Now that may be the exact thing you want. It just depends on your situation. If I was to add a row, it doesn't number that new row. What I would have to do is select that number there, hold down control and drag the fill handle down to renumber all the cells below. Okay, let's move on to the next example. In this example, we're actually gonna use a formula to number our records. And the function we're gonna use within this formula is the row function. Now, if I just type equals row, open bracket, close bracket, what it does is it returns the row number of the current cell. If I copy this down, you can see it then increments that number. This formula is in row three, so it returns three. What if I want to start with a row number of one? Well, what I could do is write minus one at the end of my formula, copy this down, and then it gives me the correct numbering. If I insert a row, then it correctly numbers the rows beneath, but I have to copy the formula down into the blank row to number that new row. If I add a new row at the end of the data, let's just add a date, it doesn't automatically number the row. I have to copy that formula down. Okay, now I'll just delete that new record and I'll delete this empty row here. Now, a improvement you can make to this method is to contain your data within an Excel table. To do that, it's very easy. All you do is select a cell within your data and use Control T on your keyboard. You'll get this little dialog box that just confirms the range of cells that you're going to convert to a table. 
And then you have this option here, my table has headers. Mine does, so I'm gonna keep it ticked, click on OK. And it does apply a bit of formatting to our data, but let's see what difference this makes. Well, one of the differences it makes is where I add a new record at the end of my data. You can see that it automatically numbers the new record. Also, if I was to insert a new record, it would automatically number that new record for me. And it didn't do that previously. So if you're using the row function method, then it's well worth containing your data within an Excel table. Next, I want to show you how to display leading zeros within your numbering. What I'm gonna do is write another formula. I'm gonna say equals row minus one. Now to show leading zeros, I'm going to use the write function. The write function returns a specified number of characters from the right side of a text string. Now I want my transaction ID to always have three characters. If the transaction ID is one, I want 001. If the transaction ID is 10, I want 010. So the maximum number of zeros I'll ever want is two zeros. So I'm gonna enter them as text values and I want to concatenate the zeros with the result of the row function. This concatenation forms my text value, which is the first argument of the right function. So I put a comma in, and now I need to specify the number of characters I want to return. But I only ever want three digits in my transaction ID. So the number of characters I return from the right side of this text string is three. I close the bracket, press enter, copy this down. You can see then that I get those three digit transaction IDs. If I want the extra functionality that a table gives me, I need to convert this to a table. So I click in any cell, control T on my keyboard, click on OK. If I was to add a new record, it would automatically number the next record. What if I wanted to prefix these three digit numbers with a text string, something simple like X, Y, Z. This might work well for product IDs. Well, let's copy the first formula that I have here. And I'll go to the next sheet and I'll paste that into this cell here. Now to prefix this three digit number with some text, all I do is I put that text, say X, Y, Z, in quotation marks, and then put in an ampersand symbol to concatenate it with the result of the right function. I press enter, copy this down. You'll see it does exactly that for me. Now, obviously it's beneficial to put your data in the table. Control T, click on okay. If I go to the bottom here, add a new record, it automatically numbers this record for me. If you are an Office 365 user, there is another method that you could use. This method, however, will not work in an Excel table, although it enjoys some of the benefits of using an Excel table. This method uses the new sequence function. And the only argument I have to use in this context within the sequence function is the rows argument. I need to calculate the number of rows that I need to fill with numbers. Now I could do that by counting the number of rows in column B, or the number of cells rather, in column B that contain a value. And the function that does that is count A. It counts the number of non-empty cells. I want to count all the cells in column B that contain a value, but I don't want to count the heading. So I'm gonna say minus one. I close the bracket and press enter, and it fills all the cells in column A with a number. What if I add a new value at the bottom of column B? Even though I'm not in a table, it's automatically generated a number for that row. What if I insert a row between rows? Then I get a slight problem because the count of cells in this column that contain a value is now one less than the number of records I have in my table. As soon as I add a value to that record, it generates a number for the last record in my 
data. So if you have Excel 365, this is another option for you. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you have, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.